My name's Jason. I'm here because I believe in a socialist future for humankind and that requires standing up against tyranny and oppression, which the Syrian people have done now for five years and they've been assaulted by barrel bombs, phosphorus, chemical attacks, and forced displacement deals besides the Nuller Star policy. So much of the socialist and leftist, or what they claim to be, are supporting this because they say the U.S. is backing it. That should be clear to everyone that it's not true anymore. The U.S. is trying to strangle the Syrian revolution. Obama wants to work with Putin. Putin's going on his own, but Obama wants to work with him to bomb the Syrians. And it's a terrible, terrible crime that we have to stand up and say no to. Oh, I, I am a revolutionary socialist. I believe that the fight for human rights has to be a fight for socialism, not phony socialism like the Ba'ath Party, so-called Arab Socialist Renaissance Party of al-Assad, not the Stalinists in Russia, real socialism. I think that this is the way, a socialist revolution is the way to win human rights. And anybody that is fighting for their human rights, we, we can figure it out. It's not so difficult to figure out who's fighting for human rights, who's fighting against. The people that are fighting for whatever their point of view, whatever their ideology, I have to support that fight. There's 70,000 Syrian refugees who are trapped on the border with Jordan. They're stuck between the sand berms marking the Jordanian border and the Syrian border. Jordan won't let them in. They're facing hostile gunmen on either side. Hostile soldiers on the Jordanian side, hostile soldiers on the Syrian side. They're receiving no aid. They're in a completely untenable situation. The world is barely even paying any note of this. What I find extremely frustrating and painful is that uh, you know most of the traditional anti-war voices in this country, in the United States, are simply flat on the wrong side in Syria. They're rooting for Assad and they're rooting for Putin. I mean, just the other day, somebody, we don't know who, somebody actually dropped a banner off of the Manhattan Bridge with Putin's face saying peacemaker while he is committing horrific war crimes in Syria day by day by day and getting away with it. I mean, it was about a year ago that the U.S. bombed a hospital in Kunduz, Afghanistan, and there was a great deal of global, global outcry over this as well. There should have been. But Russia and Assad have been waging an intentional campaign of bombing hospitals. Something like, I mean, they're literally targeting every hospital in rebel-held territory in Syria. At a certain point, when the crimes become this ghastly and pose this much of a danger to quote-unquote world peace, such as it continues to exist, then, you know, the argument that the crime isn't being done with our tax dollars has its limits. You have a responsibility to protest it, not merely as a U.S. citizen, but as a global citizen, as a member of the global human family, you have a responsibility to protest it. Okay. A demand of many Syrians, particularly the people who are under bombardment in Aleppo now is for a safe zone or, or no-fly zone. And I understand the problems with this. I mean, the biggest problem with it is that Russia obviously is not going to go along. So if the U.S. intends to impose a no-fly zone, it's going to risk military confrontation with Russia, which could escalate globally. So I'm not glib about this. I understand the problems with the demand for a for a no-fly zone. But also, you know, throwing up our hands and saying not our problem is not a solution either. And you know, saying that uh, the, the attitude of the of the so-called anti-war movement in the United States seems to be at best that it's acceptable for Syrians to die so as to avoid superpower conflict, to, so as to avoid an escalation of the world war between the U.S. and Russia. And that does not strike me as a particularly principled or, um, or courageous position. It strikes me as an extremely unprincipled and cowardly position. So uh, I'm not out here making policy prescriptions, but I am out here saying that uh, the world owes some kind of um, solidarity to the Syrians. And particularly speaking as a member of, a uh, longtime member of the anti-war forces in the United States, that we have to um, raise our voice against what Assad and Putin are doing in Syria, just as we raised our voices about what the U.S. was doing in Iraq. 
if there were a safe zone, of course, I mean, well, people want to be safe. But the reason, the, what the U.S. wants to do is they want to keep people from leaving, not to be able to stay where they are, which is what today's about, against forced displacement. They want to prevent them from going to Europe and putting pressure on Europe. And that's not a real solution. I mean, if it saves lives, of course, we want to help people however they can be helped. But it's not a real solution to say, here's this area in Syria where you can go and be in a refugee camp inside Syria instead of outside of it, that's not a genuine, I don't think, a, a genuine political solution. The bombing should stop, the attacks on civilians should stop, so they should be able to live where they live.